Hi Scorpio, it's a general reading for the sign of Scorpio. So this reading could resonate with anyone who has Scorpio strongly in their chart. Um, but please remember that we are all different ages and we all live in different parts of the world. We're all experiencing different depths of situations. So um, these readings will not resonate with everyone, but hopefully there's something here that will help you in your journey forward, Scorpio. Um, my beautiful friends, I welcome you here today into this space just as you are. I'm happy you're here and I look forward to the story that's coming out today. Spirit, what is the current energy for this group of Scorpios? For this group of Scorpios, what is the current energy? What is the current energy for this group of Scorpios, please? What is the current energy for this group of Scorpios? What is the current energy? What is the current energy, please? still something here that wants to come out. What is the current energy, please? All right, I'll straighten those out in a moment. What is in the next immediate future, Spirit, what is the energy that Scorpio will be stepping into? That Scorpio will be stepping into what is the current energy the Scorpio will be stepping into what is the current energy the Scorpio will be stepping into please what is the current energy the Scorpio will be stepping into Remember to breathe. It's what is the current energy that Scorpio will be stepping into? The next seven to ten days, the next couple of weeks, the next three weeks. Here we go. emotions as I shuffle I and mean, I had a sense of frustration and I was frustrated and then what came out was temperate so it usually happens as I'm shuffling I can kind of feel the energy now the energy is kind of calming down there's two cards that are in here that will kind of pop out one right after the other and there they did yeah, so I can kind of tell as I'm moving forward what's going to happen with the shuffling. <laughs> it's kind of fun to do it. Okay, Scorpio, let's look at the guidance. What is the guidance for Scorpio? What is the guidance for Scorpio? What is the guidance? This card made a lot of noise. Nine of Swords. Did it come out, though? That's okay. We'll let the Nine of Swords stay in the deck. Guidance for Scorpio. for Scorpio. One more, please. All right. Let's see what's here for the sign of Scorpio. Knight of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. 
Five of Cups and the Seven of Cups. Right, I'm going to put the Knight of Pentacles upright. We know that we know that it's lateral, um, but this is the first time I'm reading these cards. I want to be able to really sink into the energy really well. So we know that this is an offer here um, that you're you're. Scorpio, I think this is you in the Knight of Pentacles energy. I think it's you. Um, you're you're trying to move forward on something. You're you're working to you're working to move forward on something, and you're just about ready. Um, it's like you're getting packed up to go on a, um, a a long trek, and you're getting packed up. Um, that's an analogy that's been given to me, and you're trying to pack your bags. And you're not quite sure if you're packing your bags appropriately, if you have the right kind of clothes, if you have the right kind of tools with you. There's a bit of insecurity here. And I don't mean it's like a, it's an insecurity that's a weak insecurity. It's not that. And it's not even really insecurity. Although deep down, that's what it is. It's more of the desire here to do this in the most appropriate, the most effective, um, and the most, you only want to do this once. That's what's coming forward. This is something that you're only going to want to do once. You're not going to, you're not going to want to do it again. You just want to do it one time. So there's something about this journey or this situation that is important. It's very important. It's very significant. Um, what you're preparing to do. So you're in the process of packing up. You're in the process of preparing for whatever this journey is. Doesn't matter if it's starting a new business, if it's, applying for new jobs, it's if it's stepping into parenthood for the first time, um, if it's moving home, if it's moving country, whatever this is, you're only planning on doing this once, or there's something very significant about this that you know that you only want to do it once, or you can only do it once. Um, and so you're being so very careful as you're, as you're moving forward. Um, look at the rest of the cards. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we have the Two of Pentacles, the Five of Cups, and the Seven of Cups. Okay. Okay, so as I read, I start, when I read laterally like this, I start at the, um, I start at the left and I move to the right. And, um, and as I get into the rest of the energies, that's exactly what these energies are. Okay, um, let me get into the Two of Pentacles now. So the Two of Pentacles, this is juggling, making decisions. Um, it's making very practical. Okay, what's practical? What's appropriate? What's going to be the, um, it, this is, this is not letting yourself get caught up in, um, what's exciting, what's impulsive, um, what is spontaneous, but more, okay, what's practical? What's, what, I know what I want to pack on this trip. I know what I want to do. I know what I want to plan for, but what really is going to happen? You know, um, what really is going to happen? What really should I do? Um, here's my situation. It's almost like, coming out of the clouds and putting both feet on the ground and getting a piece of paper and a pencil and kind of writing down like, okay, this is what I must do. And this is what, if, if I do all of these things that I must do, these are some of the things that I'd like to do. Um, it's, it's, it's making decisions about very practical things with the two of Pentacles. And to be honest with you, I don't see a lot of stress with this energy. I think you're able to do this pretty, pretty effectively. Um, especially because it's the Knight of Pentacles energy and the Two of Pentacles energy. It's a matching energy. I think it's, it, it almost in a way it feels good. It's almost like cleaning house, that kind of energy. Um, it's, it's going to help you with these other two of more emotional energy. So you could be spending more time in this more practical sense, but in the background and, and floating within you and within your emotions are these more emotional energies here that you're kind of in a way fighting off. You could be kind of fighting off the emotional energies, pushing the emotional energies down farther as you as you're very practical. Um, but I do feel like these are more emotional energies are going to spring up as you um, prepare to move forward in this decision or in this next move that you're making. Um, and the next move that you're making is something that is going to help you financially. It's going to help you in a stable way. It's going to help you with your third dimensional life, your material items, your bank accounts, um, your home, uh, your operational, 
routine. It's going to help you in a real way. Whatever this is that you're doing is going to help you in a real way. Even if it's a relationship that you're entering into, there's something about this relationship that will help you in a very tangible way. Um, it has a very team, team oriented sense. If you're entering into a relationship, there is a mutual benefit here, right? Um, there's a very mutual benefit and it's a three, I see three coins, which is the energy of working together, creating together. Um, the, the energies of three are, um, creating something here and then making more of it. So it's a very kind of teamwork, abundant kind of energy, but it's at the very beginning stages. Um, the more, the motions here that you will be dealing with Scorpio, it is part of who you are, the ability to run emotions deep, deep within you. Um, and I think that there is some undercurrent here that you're dealing with. You are um, working through thick energy of failure of the past or misery of the past or situations in the past that haven't worked out and how that's affected you emotionally. I mean, for you, when you fail at something, and even when I say the word fail, it comes with this emotion that when I, when I say it, um, I don't, it's like, I, I have the crowd of you, um, in the, in that are listening saying, don't say it again. Oh, don't say it again. And I won't say it again. Um, but there is something here when, when situations don't go the way our heart would like, or the way that we have really put a lot of time and energy in imagining how things would go. Um, when we're feeling something so strongly, something all of ourselves, and then it doesn't work out and the, and the heartache that follows, um, is, is something that's very difficult to, to cope with Scorpio. And so there is an undercurrent here, um, of that's pushing these decisions. Um, it's like there is a tide, the moon in the ocean and how the tide comes, goes out into the ocean and then it comes back onto land at some point here, this tide right here, because you're so, you know, focused on, operational on practical decisions, this tide has gone out, but soon, or, or maybe now this tide is beginning to push back in and you will begin to feel these emotions that are part of this process of moving very slowly. Um, I like that you have these emotions because these emotions are going to help you steer your ship into a very safe Harbor. Um, so, so your team is, is working with you in a very effective way. Although these are very uneasy energies, the Knight of Pentacles is a, is a strong, stable energy. It's that you have found yourself a very stable ship to carry you forward. And you're working very hard to make good decisions about how to move that ship. Um, but what is going to push the ship and what is going to help move it along and go through the swells of the water are these emotions here that we see. We also have the Seven of Cups. And so this is the desire um, to really pick well, to choose well. And um, you, you're you just looking at this map now and trying to decide, okay, which is the best way to go? If I go this direction, I mean, how will I feel about that? How will I be impacted? Um, what kind of treasure will be in this route? What kind of experience? What kind of heartbreak? What kind of lovely situation will be in this harbor? And so you're really... Um, it's, it's conflicting energies with the five of cups. You're, you have this energy. Okay. This is what, these are all emotional though. And I'm Aquarius, a lot of Aquarius Scorpio. So, um, I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. And when I get into this energy, I just feel like the blood and the energy cursing up and down my spine. So it's something that runs deep within you. On one hand, your emotional state is saying, um, well, I've been there. I've done that. I've been there and I done, I've done that. But the seven of cups is energy. Well, I haven't been there and I don't really know what's in that. And I haven't been there and I, I don't really know what's in that, but that's really pulling at me. So you have these like a little bit of a contrasting emotional energies. This is a beautiful way to steer. Honestly, it's a beautiful way to steer. And you're, if you're feeling like you're inept at this or you're um, not sure that you can move forward with this, these energies of even the yin and yang within your emotions as you move forward, it's a beautiful balance. So trust in yourself, my friends, because what you're doing here is a beautiful planning um, 
planning for an excursion, planning for a new change. It's a beautiful way to do it. And I do feel like it does feel very quite uneasy for you. Um, but this will be, um, this is a very important pro step to the process as you move forward with these five energies, the seven energies of emotions. Five is this um, very uneasy awkwardness, um, tentiveness, uh, grimacing kind of energy. And the seven energy is like a peeking over the wall, peeking over the wall, peeking over the hedge, um, trying to get as far up on your tiptoes as you can to see over. Um, not really seeing over very well, but feeling excited about what's there. Um, and I feel like there's more than one wall that you're peeking over. So it's, it's a, it's a contrasting yin and yang of emotions. And I, it's going to help you really steer this ship well. So I have a lot of confidence in the way that you're, that you're trying to make this decision. Um, but you are moving forward on something. And even though this Knight of Pentacles was lateral like this, um, at some point here very soon, you are going to move forward here um, with something very different and very big um, and significant in your life change. So it's almost like there's a two of wands here. There's a two of wands here, a life change here. Um, but but since we're, we look at very short periods of time, um, we're just getting a, a snapshot of this overall life change that you're going through. It's a snapshot is what it is. So let's look at what you'll be stepping into as you move into the next couple of weeks, into the next three weeks, into the next, se you know, seven to 10 days. However, however fast this Knight of Pentacles, you know, is going to write itself. However fast, it kind of depends on how quickly you're moving as well. All right, let's see what's here for you. The lover's energy. So this is moving into the future here. Five of swords. Nine of wands. Six of cups. Temperance. I felt that. Death. Judgment. So this is over the next few weeks. So um, I'm going to get into the, these energies. And sometimes when I get into them, it sounds really epic. It sounds like a life change. It sounds, but please understand like, I get into the energies and I tell you how I feel. You might have to scale this down to something that is like something that could be smaller that happens within a month's time, not within two years time. So just so you know, and I want to be really candid with that. When I get into these energies, uh, especially if it's a dramatic card, like the five of swords here, I can get really into it and I can make it seem like a huge epic battle, but it could just be something so simple as um, working something out with your lover or, um, moving through a situation at work um, that is not a huge life move, but but more of a smaller monthly type of episode that you're dealing with. So that said, that with that disclaimer, I'm going to go ahead and get started in this story. I love these images. Okay, I'm going to move the cards down so I can really get into each energy. And as I move to the second row, um, mm, I can't really do that because they're, th some of these stories are intertwining. I'm just going to move them down just a little bit just so you can see everything here. Well, there's a decision in love that you're making. I mean, it, it's so clear. There's some sort of decision here that you're making about something you love or about a lover or about a family member, but this is something that you love. Um, this is also about understanding the roles that we have and that some people have roles of 
It's the yin and the yang energy. So some people have roles that push us forward and some people have roles that beckon and, and give love. Um, and I, I do feel like there is a message coming forward here to have, um, well, you will be because this is how you will be moving forward. This is not guidance. So, um, this is, this is how it will move forward, not guidance. I have to remember that. Um, you, it looks like you're having some sort of understanding here and patience and tolerance for some sort of a partner that is in your life that is a complementary energy to you. So if you're a yin energy, if you're a more feminine energy, then the other energy would be more masculine. Or if you're more masculine, the other energy would be more feminine. I'm not talking about male or female. I'm talking about the feminine and the masculine or the yin or the yang. Um, the easiest way to explain yin and yang is the, the yang energy. If you take a ceramic mug, a coffee mug, the yang energy would be the mug itself. The mug that is concrete that you can hold in your hands, um, that is, is the vessel, right? And then the yin energy would be the, the hole that's in the mug um, that you can pour the liquid into, that you can pour the coffee or the tea into. Um, so neither vehicle, neither, neither energy would be anything without the other. The mug would not be a mug without the hole in it. And the yin energy would not be able to um, live around the mug without the hole. Um, so it's, it's, it's a partnership or it's something here where you're dealing with something that is exact opposite of you. All right. So there's someone or something that's the exact opposite of you, um, that you're having to spar with spar or have some type of a, a battle, but it's not like an epic battle. It's a, it's a five energy. It's a five of swords. So I, I feel for many of you, something could have been taken from you before, because usually with the five of swords, um, the five of swords is an energy of taking back something that, that was yours or establishing a boundary that was stepped into. Um, it can have a sense of you, when you fight the five of swords energy, there can be like an underlying worry that you're being selfish, or there can be, um, a, a accusation from the other party that you're being selfish with the five of swords, but the five of swords is kind of a battle that you didn't want to fight, but you have to, it's not a huge epic war. It's, it's a squirmish. That's the word I'm trying to find. It's a squirmish. It's, <laughs> it's like a quarrel that you have with someone, um, that you're having with someone that you don't really want to fight, but for some reason you've been pushed into a corner, um, or you have been forced to have an exchange of words or, or the, the yang energy, if you're the yin energy, if you're the feminine, if you're the hole in the mug, perhaps the mug has, be, you know, like the mug has become so thick that it doesn't have very much of a hole anymore. So when you go to pour your tea into the mug, it doesn't, it's only a couple swallows worth or something. Um, I know that's such a silly, silly example but that's okay. You get it. So, um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like I can't anyway, whatever. Okay. I'm in the energy. I'm in the energy. Okay. There's something that's happening. That's sort of ridiculous. It's sort of ridiculous, but, but what I see happening here, um, is there is some sort of resolution of this. That's what I'm seeing here. There's a resolution. Now the resolution is going to come kind of in a, in a jerky way. It's not all going to be resolved at the same time, but it's going to be a stair step. Cause when I go through this energy, I feel kind of a bumping, a jolting forward. So there's going to be kind of a stair step where you're going to maybe have several different conversations or several different skirmishes here. Um, but there's something here that you're learning how to have patience around this, or you're learning how to moderate your words. You're learning how to work, how to have the nuance of this. So there's some sort of learning here because you are in the nine of wands and you move to the six of cups. Um, so again, there's been a boundary. Um, as you move forward, there's, there's some sort of a boundary that's been, and remember, we have this Knight of Pentacles here that is moving forward. So you're moving forward on something that's very stable. You're moving forward on a project or a new decision or on progressing a love relationship or 
something here, buying a home or, or something, you're moving forward in a very stable way with something that's going to improve your life in the years to come. And in that journey and, and along with this story, there is some sort of squirmish that you're having with someone who's very close to you, someone who's a partner with you. So this could be someone at work. This could be a business partner. This could be a family member. It's someone that's very close to you. It's someone that's the opposite of you in some way um, that you're having some kind of a squirmish with about this trip that you're going to take or this project that you're moving forward or whatever this Knight of Pentacles is. But in the next few weeks, there is going to be a resolution of this and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to end very well. And what's happening is both of you are beginning to understand how to communicate more effectively with each other because there's temperance here over the top of this decision and over the top of the squirmish. That tells me um, that there is understanding here. So maybe you both are being able to see each other's perspectives or maybe one person is seeing the other's perspective. Whatever this squirmish is, it looks like the, the temperance energy is the winner, which means that the temperance energy um, is able to color this situation in a way that brings um, a solution because we do see you moving from the nine of wands energy to the six of cups energy, which is an equalization. So something wasn't fair. Something wasn't fair or somebody was wanting something that wasn't um, doable. Somebody was asking too much or somebody wasn't pulling their own weight um, because we do have the nine of wands and the nine of wands is a defensive energy but it's also the energy of a specialist, right? The nine of wands energy is the energy of a specialist. See, this farmer is knows exactly how to protect his flowers. He knows how to protect his crops from the, from the birds who will come and eat his seeds, right? He knows how to do it. He's very much a specialist and he knows that in order for this crop to be effective, in order for him to, to bring in an income from his hard work, he needs to protect it in some way. Um, I love this Nine of Wands energy. This is now a favorite card of mine because it does talk about being proactive to being protective, right? We can't be protective and sit back. When we're in a protective energy, we need to step forward. We need to stand tall. We can't sit back and be protective. If you're slit sitting in your rocking chair, it's pretty hard to wield a sword as you sit there with a coffee cup, right? There's that damn coffee cup again. I can't get rid of it. Um, so it's pretty hard. It's, it's much easier to defend something or to protect something when you're on your feet and you're in action, you're aware, you're observing, you're, you're proactive, you're not sitting back. So, um, it moves to the, see, I'm getting, I, sometimes when I'm in these energies, you could, that's what I'm seeing. There's like, there is sort of like a, a moving forward on this. So it's almost like you have one conversation with this person or you have one squirmish with this person and you think you have it figured out. And then you go home and you sit down and you, you know, you get ready for, for bed and you, then you go into bed. I don't know why I'm going through this. You, you go into bed and you lay there and you're like, but wait, but wait there's still something that's bothering me. There's still something we haven't talked about. And you, and you kind of go through, and then you go to work the next day and you're like, okay, can we, you know, I, I really need to talk to you again. I, I found some other um, items that I'd like to go over with you and you finish off, you, you finish resolving it. It's kind of like a two-step tiered procedure or process here that you're going through because the energy is kind of jerky as I move through. And then we also have the death and the judgment energy. So it's telling me that there's like a two-step process here. It's like maybe you have to get to one. It's it's almost like, have you heard of like when people um, mediate? When when you go into mediation, let's, let's say you're in a court case or you're going through some type of mediation, sometimes a mediator um, we'll say, let's put this into brackets, right? Let's put this into brackets. What is the worst it can, what is the worst to sit, you know, whatever. It's about negotiation, mediation. So I don't want to get into mediators because I don't totally understand it, but I just know that um, this is going to be for many of you a two-step process or a three-step process because you're going to come to some sort of resolution 
And then after that resolution, then you're going to come into, maybe you resolve it. And then the next day you meet and you say, okay, now that we've resolved this, now what are we going to do in the next step? But there's definitely a two-step process here that I see as you move forward in this. It doesn't have to be about work. It can be about negotiating. Um, it can even be about negotiating when you're going to get married. Right? It doesn't even have to be a stressful situation. It's just something here that you're at odds with, with someone that's a partner energy to you. It's something that you're at odds with. You're, you're having to really express your, your desires here, express and, and vocalize what you wish because there's something here that to you is not quite fair. And you're having to go into action here to kind of protect yourself and you can't sit back at this time. So I don't see you sitting back. I see you standing up. I see you out in front of whatever it is and engaging to find new equality. And we have the six of cups here or the six of six of, why was I saying the six of pentacles? Six of Cups. Well, I, the Six of Pen, the Six of Pentacles is here too. So there, for many of you, if this is a work situation, you're getting more equality in whatever it is you're doing. You're getting more equality here if this is a work situation because there's something that hasn't been fair. If this is a love situation, okay, it's almost like they gave me two scenarios at once. That's that's kind of beautiful. So if this is a love situation, you're moving into a more peaceful time, a more harmonized kind of lifestyle here. Um, is sometimes we have to really work. Like when I do energy work um, with myself, I have to, I usually bring my energy um, into the center line of my body. And when I do that, I work to harmonize. I, I'll swing back and forth with my energy and finally I'll get it into the middle line um, that goes down my spine. And as I talk about it, it's sort of doing it. Um, and that's sort of what's happening here. If this is a romantic situation or a family situation that has to do with love, um, you're bringing this into a more harmonized place within yourself. Um, this is definitely something that, that when I get into the emotional energy here, the love energy, it's something that really can swing you back and forth, swing your moods back and forth. Um, there's that swinging kind of energy. Because we do have this couple here in the water. Um, and so they're in the emotions of it. So this can be an emotional period. For those of you dealing with a love situation, this can be a very emotional time period for you. But I do see that it's it's healing. It's becoming more warm and fuzzy. Um, you're able to move out of the Nine of Wands energy into this more harmonized emotional place um, where you're feeling happy again. Um, you're looking back at your past again. You're happy about it. Um, you're feeling like everything is pretty even everything is um, equal um, and your moods are even. That's what I'm getting at. Like your, your moods, you're moving from like a, an ocean here that was quite rocky and you're moving forward here um, in into an energy that's much more stable. The water is much more stable because again, you have some sort of a, a, a movement forward that you're doing. You're, you're moving on some kind of a journey. Uh, many of you might be in some kind of a love situation with someone and you're moving forward in that. Others of you could be in a work situation that you're moving forward with, some kind of project that you're moving forward with. Whatever this is, if this is a pentacles energy or an emotional energy, it is about finding harmony and balance in a relationship that will be a promising relationship. It will be a promising relationship. And here is that um, again, like, okay, so we do have a pentacles energy here and we also have an emotional energy. So I'm going to stick with that. There is some reason why I thought at first that that was a pentacles energy. Um, it is the very first time I'm using the deck, but there is a, here a balancing um, of the pentacles and the emotions here um, in the way that you're moving forward. So we do see um, a, a brand new... Um, it's like there's a brand new solution that comes forward and and it does feel really good. It allows you to kind of come out of this defensive energy and move back into this much more harmonized type energy. So that's what I feel for you as you move into um, into the next couple of weeks. Now, I do feel still in the abdomen area, whatever this was, it kind of took some energy out of you. So you may need to really find some quiet time, even though it was a five of swords or something here that kind of scared you. Um, because I do feel an effect here, some sort of wounding in the solar plexus. So you could have had hurt feelings from this. Like you could have felt, um, whatever the situation was, you could have felt like there was some sort of unfairness here. And you could deep down wonder if this unfairness is a lack of consideration. Um, you could have some insecurity about even moving forward. 
there is some wounding here and I think it's just it's just wounding I don't think it's it's reality I think it's more emotional state wounding um we have the five of cups here which is that old the the old feelings of her past traumas um, it could just be some energy of the past that's deep within you that kind of was was set free um, that needs to be kind of healed from something that happened in the past. But I do feel like there's some sort of wounding here that you might need to just spend some time, dig deeper into that. Um, speak it out. You might want to say something, but but try not to. If it's truly something from the past that doesn't um, really involve this current energy Please, please be discerning to, to be wise about who you talk. So if this is a situation that you're feeling this wounding and it didn't really happen because of this situation, you might want to talk to a friend about it or something rather than this, this other person, because it might not have anything to do with this person at all. It might be something that has cropped up from something way in the past. So um, there yeah, there is some kind of wounding here. Um, I you we do have the judgment. I like that the that the rays of the of the um source energy here. I was going to say the moon, but it's not. It's source energy. It's coming down. Could be the moon, but it's source energy coming down and helping to heal you, bring back new vitality to you. So it does feel like in the Six of Cups is a healing energy. You might need some healing. You might need to have a makeup retreat where you, if this is a lover, it might be good if you can go on a couple of nights vacation and just reconnect in a, in a really deep way. If this is someone for work, maybe you guys could go out to lunch or go to coffee together and reconnect and um, because there, there might be a need here to reconnect. This is some, this is whatever this project is or this relationship is, it's something that you really value, something that you really deeply care about because that's the Knight of Pentacles energy. Um, and you don't want to hurt this, whatever this is, you don't want it to be hurt. And I think it would be wise if you could somehow do something once it's resolved, um, to come together in a very safe and secure way so that you can heal so that you can heal whatever this is in the solar plexus that has kind of cropped up, whether it's cropped up from this situation itself or whether it's cropped up from something in the past, um, in a past experience, there is a need here to bond, to, to make this relationship or this situation secure um, for you so that you can drop this Five of Cups energy. Okay, let's look to see what the guidance is that's coming forward. The Fool. Love it. Nine of Pentacles. The Sun. The Tower. <laughs> Here again, we have those different energies that I was seeing, these, these energies of the yin and yang here. Um, both of these sets of energies, I'm just going to move these down just a little bit because I feel like there's like energies here that are yin and yang and understanding how to work with the different energies, the energies that are within you that conflict with each other and the energies that are around you that can conflict with each other. But we need to have those conflicting energies to be able to move forward. We can't have just the yang without the yin. We can't have the yin without the yang, right? We can't have the sun without the tower. We can't, like we can't, if we don't experience change in our life, if we don't experience surprise and shock, we, we don't experience the sun. It's they, they are definitely requirements for each other, right? If we don't experience the full energy, we certainly don't experience the nine of pentacles energy. We don't, if we don't set off and do something new, try something new, step forth into something new, we never can experience the abundance of what the earth can bring us, right? It's these energies are contrasting energies. It's about learning how to be balanced within oneself and, and moving forward in those energies and then understanding um, the external um, experiences that we face that help bring new vitality because all change, 
Why is this such a deep guidance? I'm going to go deep for just another minute, but then we're going to talk about these energies on face value. Um, with the tower energy and the sun, scary energy, shocking energy, energy that really gets our adrenaline flowing. Um, it can be so something small, like let's say you haven't been punching, you haven't been keeping track of your time that you've been working, your payroll. You haven't been ch clocking in or clocking out. And you know that you need to be keeping track of what you're doing. You need, know you need to be keeping track of what projects you're working on, whatever. And then all of a sudden you get carried away and you go through the week and all of a sudden um, somebody comes up to you and says, um, you know that, that, that Smith, the Smith project, um, can you let me know how many hours you worked on the Smith project this week? Whew. And all of a sudden you're like, damn, I haven't recorded my time. And so you start recording your time really quickly and you, you get back on track. And the next week, then you keep really good track of your time. It's that kind of an energy, the tower energy that helps us be successful. Without it, we become complacent. We become, we, we sit in the recliner, you know, that's, that's how we are. That's how humans are. So that's what these energies ultimately, like when we go very deep into these energies, that's what we're talking about here, the polar opposites and how they're, they are required for forward movement in our lives. Um, but on, in, in more face value here, we have the fool. Um, so now I'm going to move these back up again. We have the fool energy. So this talks about stepping into something new. It takes a lot of trust and faith to um, move forward into something new. We, we, we really give up a lot of control when we do that. So there is um, some guidance here to, to um, kind of surrender into this. We, we do have this Knight of Pentacles in the lateral. So there is guidance here to step into this. What happens will happen. Sometimes we work so hard to keep all of the mistakes from happening. We want to control the situation moving forward so that we'll be safe and secure. We want to pack exactly what we need on our trip. But sometimes things happen on trips. Sometimes things happen on excursions that we could never plan for. So the guidance is um, take time, make sure you're careful. But at some point here, there's got to be movement forward and there's got to be trust that you will be okay. Because remember, you have this inner strength now. You have the ability to make good, strong decisions for yourself. You probably here have enough money because the Nine of Pentacles is here. So you have enough money now that if something goes wrong, you should be okay. Right? With the Nine of Pentacles. There is a, an energy of abundance here. So, and the, and, the, and the Nine of Pentacles is sitting right next to the sun, which is reminding me here of the, of the, of the vast amount of resources that are probably at hand, um, the, the power that you have within yourself, your inner strength, your optimism, your anticipation for the future, your ability to overcome um, the surprises that come up towards us as we move forward, your ability to see through the storm, see through the rain clouds, to see, th see through the fog um, at all that is abundant and all that is beautiful in our lives. So there's just here a reminder that um, it's scary to step forward into something new, but you have the strength to do it. You have the resources to do it. You have the power of your spiritual team as they walk next to you. Um, there is a lot of beautiful things happening in your life right now. And sometimes the tower, these little, um, and sometimes the tower is big, but I think in this case, the tower is kind of a surprise or something that comes along that jerks you um, just a little bit here. The tower sometimes is necessary to help us reset and realign onto something if something gets a little bit off course. So, you know, I, I think that you're going to be okay. And the guidance here is, is fairly positive. Um, and I love to see the fool here. That is such an interesting image of a fool. Um, I felt like that before in my life. Have you felt like that too? I'm sure you're feeling like it right now. All right, my beautiful friends, I am going to take a break and move into the extended. I want to dig deeper into some of these energies. I'm going to dig deeper into this Knight of Pentacles. I want to see what this is. Um, I want to see what this lover's energy is. I want to dig deeper into the Six of Cups. And I do want to dig deeper into, what should I dig deeper into? The Knight of Pentacles or the Sun energy or the Fool energy. I think what I'll do is I'll take these three energies and dig into them together because it seems like it's all the same situation here. And I won't need to dig into the tower anymore. 
Good Lord. Okay, so I am going to move to the extended. I'm going to dig into these energies in the extended, dig deep into these energies um, of the Six of Cups, the soul connection, the healing that goes along with that, the lover's energy, the Knight of Pentacles, and these three beautiful cards. I'm going to dig into these, and then I'm going to look at the people who are around you and what their intentions are. All right, so that's the plan for the extended. If you would like more information, feel free to move to the link below. Otherwise, for those of you that are happy as is, that makes me happy too. And I'll see you back on YouTube in another seven to 10 days with another story. All right. Thank you very much, Scorpio. It's always a, a real treasure to get into your energy. Thank you.